And here with us now to talk more about today's meeting between U.S. and Turkish officials is Robert Pearson. He's a former U.S. ambassador to Turkey from 2000 to 2003, and now he's a scholar at the Middle East Institute. Ambassador Pearson, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Michelle. Happy to be here. Uh, ambassador, U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has described Turkey, and I quote, as a trusted ally. How would you describe the nature of the U.S.-Turkey relations? Well, it's bumpy, and it's been bumpy for several years, and it will remain bumpy going into the future. But in terms of trying to accomplish what the secretary wants, he's the third major visitor to uh, Ankara in the last uh, six weeks. Pompeo, uh, CIA head, was there. Then General Joseph Dunford, the chief of the joint uh, staff, has been there several times talking with his counterpart, the Turkish uh, chief of the general staff. And so now it's time and was time for Secretary Tillerson to go and and try to give an overall uh, atmosphere of management and addressing of serious issues without breaking the ties between these two allies. And I think that was the overall theme and purpose rather than trying to resolve or respond to these specific Turkish demands which have been repeated uh, in public a number of times. Well, Ambassador, one of those demands, one of Turkey's main grievances with the U.S. is the policy started by the Obama administration of supporting Kurdish fighters in Syria who are fighting ISIS forces. Why is this such an issue for Turkey? Well, I, a little context, you know, uh, ISIS ran into the Kurds when it was rapidly expanding in the fall of 13 and the spring of uh, 14, and the U.S. started to fight back uh, in the summer of 14, and it fought back with the local forces that were there. So basically, ISIS ran into the Kurds and not the other way around. Second issue is that when the Kurds were trapped in Kobani, right across the Turkish border, the Turkish army decided not to help them, and the U.S. came in with airstrikes. So Turkey had plenty of opportunities uh, uh, three years ago to come into this fight, and they only did that uh, nine months ago, uh, in, uh, in July of, uh, of uh, I mean, in, in July of uh, 16. So uh, that means that the U.S. has been working at destroying ISIS now for three years. It's a little hard to see the Turks coming in uh, at the last moment and saying, no, 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 do it our way, our game. Uh, you can't fight with these guys. You have to take our guys who are less trained, less capable, uh, and less ready to finish the fight. And the U.S. wants to move ahead as rapidly as possible. But, Ambassador, from Turkey's perspective, why is this such a point of contention. What is Turkey's issue with the, the Kurdish fighters? Two things, actually. One, the Turks have already accomplished. They want to prevent a Kurdish line of control from uh, the far west of Syria uh, to the far east. So by this uh, operation of Eura Euphrates Shield, they have intervened, put themselves in the middle between these two forces. So they've accomplished that. And secondly, they are worried that the uh, Syrian Kurds are cooperating with the Kurds in southeast Turkey and will help prolong the war there. Uh, and act as a, a direct threat uh, to Turkey. And now those are the two concerns they've raised with the United States, and the U.S. has tried to be responsive. Well, Ambassador, uh, Turkey, as you know, is a member of NATO, and some have criticized this, saying that Erdogan is a dictator, that Turkey is masquerading as a democracy, that Erdogan and his allies are using violence uh, to create the conditions necessary for him to consolidate power. What do you say? He has a different theory of democracy. In his theory of democracy, institutions like independent judiciary, free press, um, uh, an active and semi-independent legislature don't have a place. He believes that having been elected by popular vote, that he has the power to decide himself what the Turkish people need, and he wants to codify all that with this referendum on April 16. So it's not a standard I'm um, calling Western definition of democracy with right. competing institutions. So, do you still think NATO should, be, Turkey should be a part of NATO then? 
Well, NATO doesn't intervene in pass, you know, passing or failing grades to people's, uh, their memberships on internal uh, uh, organizations. Some, of, some other states have not exactly been perfect either, uh, and some are in Europe. So uh, the U.S. for its part and NATO for its part uh, continues to want to have Turkey in dialogue, and they want Turkey to act as a responsible ally to deal with the security issues of uh, the northern Middle East and of Europe. Ambassador Robert Pearson, thank you so much for your insight and analysis. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Michelle.